Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with DGraph, episode 4. In the previous episode, we learned about data types, indexing, filtering, and reverse traversals in DGraph. In this episode, we learn about using multi-language strings and operations on them using the language tags. Strings in DGraph are UTF-8 format, and DGraph also supports values for string predicates types in multiple languages. The multilingual capacity is particularly useful to build features which require you to store the same information in multiple languages. So let's learn more about them. Let's start by building a graph to store food reviews. Here's the graph model. You can see there are three entities in this graph, food, common, and country. Every food item is connected to its reviews via the review edge, and every food item is connected to its country of origin via the origin edge. Let's add some reviews for some fantastic dishes. Rather than having to write all this data, I will go directly to blog.dgraph.io and copy paste the mutation. Remember that first you'll need to start a dgraph instance, and the easiest way to do so is with Docker with the Docker image dgraph slash standalone. Now that we have that mutation, we're going to go to play.dgraph.io, connect to localhost 8080, and send the mutation. Now I'm going to build a query based on the mutation that we just sent. So I'm going to create a new query with function with query block name Q and a func has food name. We're going to get all of the food names, and for each review, we're going to get the comment, and for each origin, we're going to get the country. Now we can delete the rest, run our mutation, and see that we have a bunch of different dishes here. So you can see borscht, mapu tofu, carrillada, hamburger, and pav baji. I think India will correct me if I'm wrong. In previous episodes, I also mentioned that you can add aliases to your fields, and if they're called name or anything finishing with name, they will appear directly in the graph visualization and rattle. It's not necessary, but it just looks good. So in the visualization, you can see five blue footnotes. Uh, those footnotes are the ones that represent the food itself. Then three, uh, then you have for each one of those blue notes, you have a green note representing the country of, of origin of the food. And then one more pink item representing the review. For now, let's remove the country of origin and just focus on the review itself. As expected, these comments are in different languages. But can we fetch the reviews based on the language? Can we write a query that says, hey, DGraph, can you give me all the reviews written in Chinese? Well, that's possible, but only if you provide additional information about the language of the string itself. You can do so by using language tags. While adding the string data using mutations, you can use the language tags to specify the language of the string predicates. Let's see those language tags in action. So personally, I'm a huge fan of sushi. So let's add review for sushi in more than one language. We'll be writing the review in three different languages, English, French, and Chinese. So in English, we're going to say, taste very good. In French, c'est très bon. And in Chinese, hen hao zhe. Now you will see that when we send this mutation, something fails. And this is actually somehow similar to in the previous episode when we're trying to do queries that require indexes. Here we're trying to use language tags in a predicate for which we have not said that we're going to use multi-language values. How do we fix that? It's actually pretty straightforward. Just go to the schema tab, check the textbook for lang, and click on update. Now if we run the mutation again, you will see that it succeeds. Great, so now let's try to fetch that data that we just created. I'm going to create a new query, a new query block for which the function is going to say that the food name needs to equal sushi. And then I'm going to get the food name. And for the review, I'm going to get the comments. Now, when you run that, it will fail. And uh, why? Well, because we're trying to do equality on a predicate for which we have not defined any index. The solution is again, going to the schema tab, selecting what kind of index you want to have. So in here, since we're doing equality, you could go with either exact or hash. We're going to go with exact and click on update. Now, if you're on that mutation, you will get some data. Great. You can see that we get the data saying that sushi tastes very good. But where is the data but French and Chinese? Well, you can actually request those by using comment add fr for French or comment add zh for Chinese. These are actually the ISO codes for the languages, French and Chinese. And they're exactly the same we use during the mutation. Now, this doesn't mean that you always need to use ISO codes for the language tags. You could actually use any kind of codes. But using standards will make it easier for you, as you will not have to document all of the values. 
So now when we have this query, we can request comment, comment in French, and comment in Chinese. Comment is the comment that we gave without giving any information about the language. So it will be the one that we get by default when we say comment. But we can also request comment in French or comment in Chinese. We could also ask for a comment that does not exist, like for instance, comment in, in Spanish, ES. And that will simply not return anything. But what if we want to say, you know, we give me the comment in Spanish first, and if not, back up to French. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just say ES, colon, FR. And that will say Spanish first, and if Spanish is not found, then return French. Finally, if you want to find anything, you can do dot. So when you request comment at dot, this will return the untag string. But if not found, it will return a review in any of the languages that are available. In any case, it will only return one value. You can use dot at the end of any value. So for instance, in here, I'm going to say, I want to get Chinese, then French, then dot. This will return Chinese because it was available. But if it was not, it will return French. And if French was not available, then it will return first the untagged value. Or if that one was not avail available either, any of the languages available. But in any case, here, you're always returning only one single value. What if you wanted to fetch all of them? Well, simply replace dot with star and star will return all of the languages available for the predicate, including the untagged one. So when we run comment at star for sushi, you will get again Chinese, French, and English, which had not been tagged. So in this tutorial, we'll learn about using multi-language strings and operations on them using the language tags. The usage of tags is not just restricted to multilingual strings. Language tags are just a feature of DGraph that you could use for any other use case. In the next tutorial, we will continue our quest into the string types in DGraph. We will explore the string types. We will explore the indices for string types in detail. Does that sound interesting? Then see you all soon in the next tutorial. Till then, happy graphing.